Dobro večer, pratite još jedno izdanje TV intervjua. Hiljade migranata zarobljenih među granicama Bosne i Hercegovine nerijetko pod vedrim nebom samo su dio problematike koja je posljednjih godina mučila Bosnu i Hercegovinu posebno ovaj dio zemlje, odnosno konkretno Bihać i Veliku Kladušu. Danas ih je manje, regulisani su kampovi, međutim migranska kriza došla je u fokus javnosti, nažalost, nakon sukoba i ubist na Bihačkim ulicama. O svemu ovom razgovaramo sa Laurom Lungaroti, šeficom IOM-a, misije IOM-a u Bosni i Hercegovini. Dobro večer. Evo, prije svega ono što vas moram pitati, to je vaše mišljenje, odnosno neki rezime, kako je to sve bilo kad ste došli prije godinu dana, kakva je situacija koju ste zatekli i danas? Uh, the situation here in Unasana Canton is very similar to the, same, to the situation in the rest of Bosnia-Herzegovina when it comes to migrants' presence. Uh, uh, the number of migrants has stabilized in the last uh, few years. And specifically today we are talking about uh, 540 migrants only accommodated in the reception facilities of Unasana Canton, which at the moment are two. But in addition to that, we do have a number of migrants who stay outside of the, of the reception facilities. Uh, there are not very many. We are talking less than 300 persons staying outside. So I would say the situation is stable, increasingly under control, with an increased amount of beds available. Shelter capacities has increased. And also the security situation has been uh, gradually moved in the hands uh, of of the state authorities. So a number of uh, good developments uh, in the last few years when it comes to the management of migration. Uh, evo, vi ste spomenuli uh, te podatke koji zaista uh, govore da i jeste ih manje vidljivo. Je. Međutim, zatvoren je kamp Miral. Kakva je sad situacija u velikoj kladuši i kako je uopće vi objašnjavate sa aspekta ag vaše agencije? Yes, uh, first of all, just let me comment that uh, the closure of uh, Miral was planned in, in a way, in the sense that it's part of a wider strategy, a state uh, and also cantonal strategy, to make sure that uh, the transit facilities or the accommodation facilities where migrants stay are not privately owned facility, but rather either state-owned or community or municipality-owned facility, precisely to show this responsibility in the hands of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So Miral, like Sedra, being both private, were meant to be closed sooner or later. This happened uh, recently upon decision of the state authorities. And uh, um, in terms of number of migrants, uh, the situation is totally manageable because the single males who were present in Miral have been moved to Lipa and the families and accompanied separated uh, children have been moved to Borici. Of course, uh, Velika Kladusha for its uh, geographical location very close to Croatia continues to see presence of migrants and will continue to see the presence of migrants. So what we are doing together with the authorities is increasing the mobile teams so we're able to identify migrants where they are, understand their needs and transport them into shelter capacities. Over time, we hope to be able to maybe identify a smaller structure where people can get an initial support, again, municipality-owned, federation-owned, state-owned structure where migrants could get an initial immediate support and then be transferred into other facilities. Because of its geographical location, of course, Velika Kladusha will continue to see movements of migrants. Mislite li da je na cjelokupnu situaciju uticalo zatvaranje, odnosno na koji način? načinje uticalo zatvaranje Mirala? With the closure of Miral, of course, IOM continues to be extremely involved in the co-management, to support to the service of foreigners affairs when it comes to Uh, the management of the center. We continue to be here as well to monitor the standards, the human rights standards, the condition of migrants, making sure that uh, um, they are 
also supported in identifying solutions. I think the whole point here is that we have passed this emergency phase of the response and we're trying to move into more sustainable solutions. Migrants have been here for some time, migration will not stop, so in addition to making sure that the facilities and the transit accommodation are well run, we also need to understand why people are accommodated there, what are the solutions that could be offered, and we are working towards that uh, that goal increasingly Rekla bih da je osnovna uloga IOM-a upravo to razumijevanje. Na neki način moramo se onda vezati za socijalnu koheziju, odnosno projekte koje vi planirate raditi kako bi olakšali tim ljudima uslove ovdje i kako bi na neki način oni dobili mogućnost da se prelagode sistemu. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. Of course, together with the response to migrants and making sure that accommodation facilities are up to standards and that uh, there is a solutions inside, IOM is also very engaged in so-called social cohesion, working with the host communities, making sure that migration becomes an integral part in a way of a society, making sure that uh, public uh, social structure could benefit also the host community and in so doing also reducing this uh, negative feelings towards migration, reducing possible xenophobia. And we've been quite successful in the last uh, year or so, investing increasingly into host uh, communities. Velika Kladusha in particular has been uh, um, a municipality where we've invested a lot in creating playgrounds for kids, uh, in uh, supporting uh, the local uh, medical infrastructure, the same applies for BHAC, and for other communi communities which have been hosting migrants, so that there is a, a win-win situation. Migrants are getting services, but also host communities are receiving support. Možemo li konkretnije samo šta u praksi znači ti projekti, odnosno šta je evo neki vaš prvi korak koji planirate u budućnosti? Concretely, we've uh, done a lot. I mean, we have uh, invested in creating uh, spaces for youth uh, to engage uh, with the local constituents. We have uh, uh, created playgrounds uh, nearby schools uh, where the kids did not have space uh, to, to play. Uh, we have uh, donated and supported uh, um, uh, medical structures with ambulances. Uh, we have have uh, rehabilitated uh, parks uh, and we will continue to do so. Now we are going to visit also Borici. Borici is another municipality owned facility which was given by the city of Bihać and we have rehabilitated the facade of Borici so that one day if uh, the migrant situation will evolve for the better, uh, meaning that migrants will be maybe included or the numbers will be less, Borici can be used for other activities for the city. So a number of public initiatives that are going to benefit very much una sana canton. Na koji način odnosno koja je uloga ovdašnjih građana u svemu tome i na koji način IOM odnosno vaša organizacija gleda na ovdašnje građane i građanje i ono što je njih pogodilo na, na koji način situacija ova. I think Unasana Canton, of course, has been the canton which has been bearing most of the responsibility since 2018. So actually, most of the gestures of solidarities, we've seen them coming from the citizens, uh, the people of Unasana, um, not only by providing their houses, supporting the migrants, but also because l most of our employees are from Unasana Canton. So basically, lots of young people who would otherwise maybe live uh, this region are actually being engaged in providing support uh, to their own region f for the well-being of their own citizens but also of the migrants. So I have of course an excellent opinion of, uh, of uh, the canton, its population which has been extremely welcoming. Of course we have had ups and downs because there's been also issues related to accommodation but I think we've overcome them and we are steadily moving into more of a long-term vision when it comes to the government governance of migration and this is also thanks to the Unasana Canton authorities and population.
Ovdašnje vlasti obećavaju ljudima, odnosno tvrde da neće doći do nekog ponovnog pritiska na Unsko-Sanski kanton. Na koji način vi gledate bar neku bližu budućnost, s obzirom da kazali ste da su različiti projekti planirani. Je li situacija konačno pod kontrolom i jesu li ova dva kampa ono što je trebalo pružiti i građanima kako bi zaštitili, ali i naravno migrantima? Basically, overall in Bosnia and Herzegovina at the moment we have 4,000 beds available, where 2,000 are only in the Unasana Canton. Considering that today we only have 540 people accommodated, we have a large accommodation capacity still available that could accommodate newcomers in case there will be an increase of flows. At the same time, as I said, we continue to move into the identification of solutions, allowing people to, to stay less and less in a transit facility, but more to identify a solution, be it return, be it asylum for those who qualify, or family unification, So diversifying the options in order to reduce the pressure. So in terms of accommodation, I don't see uh, for the moment any uh, red flags. I hope, of course, with the elections coming, that uh, the migrant situation will not be instrumentalized politically. And that's the key message uh, that we have to deliver at all levels uh, to make sure that the, the situation continues to be uh, well managed and uh, that Uh, the phenomenon of, um, of migration is managed as many other issues uh, pertaining to this canton. So this is going to be our plea going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Za večeras toliko. Hvala za pažnju i do vidjenja.